the biggest merp walleye I have ever seen. Zebra mussel sniffing dogs are a real thing. And your long trolling rods might be costing you fish. We got all that and more coming up right now in Target Walleye's Top 5 presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Number 1. Now, if you've been following Target Walleye over the years, you've likely seen us share photos of what have been coined as Merp Walleyes. If you're new here, just buckle up. I just came across the biggest Merp Walleye yet. It was on the Weekend Warriors Fishing Podcast Facebook page. They shared this photo of Tanum W, who caught it somewhere in Saskatchewan. What a magnificently strange critter. I have zero idea how merp walleyes get the way they are. I just know that they're really fun to look at. Shoot, for all we know, they might even be more common than we think. You gotta expect that they're a little bit more difficult to get hooked than a normal walleye. So maybe there's more of those critters snooping around, merping around the lake bottom than we know of. Number two. Now I know we're supposed to be talking about walleyes and just hear me out here. Sometimes those bass heads have some pretty clever ideas that kind of cross over into the walleye world. Bass and pro Garrett Paquette must have ran out of ramen. That or, well, I guess he's got a lifetime supply of fish and candy in his garage to cook up. Okay, so what's actually going on here is Garrett said that he had a bunch of swim baits in storage. They were kind of stored in a bag, so their tails were all bent. They were not straight, which means they don't run true. What you do, or what he does, throws them in some boiling water for just 10 to 15 seconds, pulls them out, lays them straight when they cool off, good as new. Super slick tip. I wonder if he adds a little sprinkle of garlic powder in there. By the way, little side note, I've also heard of some people who will do this process and then stretch or massage the tail out a little bit, while the bait's still warm, and it can actually give those swim baits a lot more aggressive kicking action. Number three. The North Dakota Governor's Walleye Cup is happening next week on Lake Sakakawea, and they are bringing in trained muscle sniffing dogs all the way from Washington State. I don't need a trained dog to tell me that I am lacking muscles in this particular region of the boat. No, but seriously, these are professionally trained canines that are trained to do only one job, and that is to sniff out invasive zebra mussels and quagga mussels in the boats that are going to be lined up preparing to launch to potentially stop the spread of any invasives into North Dakota waters. And if I had to guess, this dog's name is probably Snoop Dogg. It's the one and only Eagle Double G. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Da, 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 da. Number four. So first off, if you don't know Corey Springle's name, where have you been? The guy has cashed a check in 25 out of 40 national walleye tour events, and that includes five wins. The dude is the goat of walleye fishing right now. I mean, seriously, the back of his truck has got to look like Happy Gilmore's with all those big boy checks. So basically, when he talks fishing, I recommend that you, we, all listen. So while most folks run longer 8, 9, 10 plus foot rods for open water trolling, Corey Springle actually uses a 7 foot rod because he isn't most folks. And it's not even a trolling rod, it's actually a 7 foot Fenwick HMG casting rod. A couple reasons why. One, he says it's just flat out easier to use, and two, it's all about the control. And I'm talking the control over you have of that walleye. So with that shorter rod, he can stand right up by the edge of the boat. He can see that fish and where it is compared to the net. He knows when that fish is turning. He knows when he needs to lift his rod to seal the deal and get that fish in the boat. Of course, it also makes it way faster and easier to throw on and off planer boards, snap weights, anything that you're monkeying around with on the end of that line. So this is just one more thing that Sprangle is doing that goes against what everybody else is saying, thinking, doing, feeling, whatever. Obviously it is working for this guy. He keeps crushing the tourney scene, cashing checks, catching big ones. And I am just over here feeling absolutely fish oblivious. Like I don't know what is going on. And that brings us to number five. So something you might hear when somebody catches a small northern is they'll call it a snake. You know, anything that's about 
annoying size to catch. It's just a little snake, right? Well, here's a completely different reason why that nickname might be pretty fitting. I mean, that thing looks more snaky than an actual snake. <laughs> I think I would just donate my bait at that point. So speaking of weird pike shenanigans, big ones are often called water wolves, which might have been a little inspiration for this pike pelt mount. I came across this picture on Jay Sloan's Instagram who said, not my style, but unique. Spotted in a northern Wisconsin bar, of course. <laughs> no offense, cheeseheads. I'm an NFL owner. How dare you? All right, that wraps up this week's top five. Big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth. And if you want more fishing content like this, sign up for the free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com. And I will see you back in seven. <laughs>